And we believe, and I think this is what uh, Senator Trianis will tell us about, is what exactly is happening today in the Philippines. So we welcome you with uh, bad news, which is also a badge of honor, at least for some politicians. Uh, Senator Trianis has been indicted last night uh, in the Philippines for sedition, for something he has said while in office in a, a place which is where you actually can speak out your mind and also say things <coughs> that may not be liked by the people that are involved but certainly are part of the political discussion and used in criminal law against the freedom of speech and certain political actions that doesn't belong to a democratic society and a democratic world we want to live in. So you have the floor and thank you very much for accepting the invitation and be with us today. Um, well, thank you very much, uh, Senator Marco uh, Baby, for uh, inviting me uh, into this forum. Uh, to everyone, good morning. On uh, September 30, 2016, Pre Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte proudly said this on national TV. Hitler massacred 3 million Jews. Now, there is 3 million, there is 3 million drug there are. And we have to stop that now. At least, if Germany had Hitler, the Philippines would have, you know, made victims. I would like to be all criminals <coughs> to finish the problem of my country and save the next generation from the peace. Okay. Uh, let me repeat what he said. Hitler massacred 3 million Jews. Now, there are 3 million drug addicts. I'd be happy to slaughter them. Also, on 05 August 2016, he said this again on national TV. I don't give a shit on an This campaign against this, this war against drug. <laughs> again, just to be clear, Duterte said that's why my order really is shoot to kill. I don't care about human rights. Believe me, I don't give a shit to what they want to say to this war against drugs. End of quote. Finally, on 10 February 2017, Duterte said this. Perion fentanyl. Uh, the doctor stopped it because he got mad. I'm supposed to cut it into four pieces, the one piece that you get from the package. And there was a time na yung buong nilagay ko because more than just the disappearance of me, you feel that you are on cloud nine. But about everything is okay with the world, nothing to worry about. Okay. As he admitted against the, doc ad against the advice of his doctor, Duterte placed the whole fentanyl patch instead of cutting it into four pieces. Because, and I quote, more than just the disappearance of pain, you feel that you are on cloud nine. Yeah. It is like uh, everything is okay with the world. Nothing to worry about. End of quote. Fentanyl, as, you may, as most of you may know, is now labeled as the most dangerous drug in North America. It is highly addictive and even more potent than heroin. These statements from Duterte basically define the messed up state the Philippines is in. We have a war on drugs policy that's run by a leader who is a self-confessed fentanyl addict with a murderous streak. This same leader, as the father of the nation, is mandated by the Philippine Constitution to uphold the human rights of his own people. True enough, since the first day in office, Duterte embarked on a killing spree using agents of the state that left thousands of our countrymen dead. How many exactly? The government spokesmen say 4,000. But human rights groups say at least 13,000. Well, today we would finally settle this matter. Let me direct you to an undisputed reference. The Duterte administration's year-end report, 2017 accomplishments. 
This was released by the Office of the President to the media officially on 26 December 2017. <coughs> on page 22 of this document, under the accomplishments of the Department of Labor and Interior Local Government, Department of Interior and Local <coughs> Government, or DILG, this is the department that supervises the Philippine National Police. Specifically, under the section of fighting illegal drugs, the DILG listed 3,967 drug personalities who died in anti-drug operations from July 1, 2016 to November 27, 2017. These are the cases of those who allegedly resisted arrest. But curiously, the DILG also listed 16,335 homicide cases under investigation from July 1, 2016 to September 30, 2017. Since it was listed under the section of fighting illegal drugs, therefore, all of these deaths are drug-related and not for other causes. The report cited the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency, Philippine National Police, National Bureau of Investigation, and Bureau of Customs as sources of this data. Those killed by unknown assailants then dumped on sidewalks or vacant lots with bodies or faces wrapped in packing tape would fall in this category. Most of them have this ubiquitous cardboards on top of the dead bodies saying, I am a drug pusher, don't be like me. Now, before I get accused of peddling fake news, this accomplishment report was reported in the media, in various media outfits like uh, GMA News Online. These are the major news outfits in Manila. If you can see here, they cited the same numbers, 3,867 and 16,335. Also, in the ABS-CBN uh, News, also 3,967 and 16,355. Then at the inquirers, same data, 3,967 and 16,355. And was even posted in the official Facebook page of the Philippine National Police. So these are the same numbers. Now, going back to the official government figures, if we add the deaths resulting from police operations and the death uh, or the drug-related homicides under investigation, we get 20,322 total number of deaths slash EJKs <coughs> under Duterte's war on drugs as of December 2017. Now, the biggest breakthrough in this document is in their hubris in reporting the deaths of thousands of Filipinos as an accomplishment, they basically admitted that there are no so-called vigilante killings and that these deaths are in fact state-sponsored executions. <coughs> Why else would you take credit for the work of unknown assailants or vigilantes and include it in Duterte's year-end report as an accomplishment? I believe the International Criminal Court would be very interested in this piece of information. As it is, such a, a number is quite shocking by any standard. But can you imagine a president of any country who would actually cite the deaths of his own people from summary executions as an accomplishment? Remember, these deaths include those merely suspected of being drug pushers who were not given a day in court 
to prove their innocence or even if guilty were no longer arrested as our laws dictate. And those suspected of being drug addicts were not even given a chance to be drug tested. Or even if they are real addicts, were no longer given a chance to be rehabilitated and reformed. What's really unfortunate is ma majority of uh, Duterte apologists and supporters are willing to turn a blind eye towards these deaths in their belief that this strategy of killing addicts and pushers could help eradicate crime and illegal drugs in our country. But how about the hundreds or maybe thousands of totally innocent people who were neither pushers nor users, but were killed just the same, either because of mistaken identity or simply because they were at the wrong place at the wrong time? Like Kia De Los Santos, the 17-year-old boy who was, job, who was just walking casually in their neighborhood when he was suddenly apprehended, dragged, then fatally shot by police officers while he was pleading for his life. This incident was uh, caught on tape, by the way. And the more than 30 children who were killed in this so-called war on drugs. Like uh, Saninio Butukan, a seven-year-old boy. Saninio died when he was hit by a stray bullet while the police were conducting an anti-drug operation in Consolacion Cebu last December. 3.2016. Danica <coughs> is the granddaughter of a drug surrenderer. Three days after her grandfather surrendered to the police, an unknown man repeatedly shot him in their house in the Gupan. Danica died due to a shot in the head last August 2016. Altea died with her father when they were repeatedly shot by policemen in Gihud Mohan. <coughs> Negros Oriental. Her father allegedly fired a gun to the policeman and was suspected to be a drug dealer. Francisco, a five-year-old five boy, died when their house was repeatedly shot by unknown suspects in Pasay City last December 11, 2016. His father was suspected to be a drug dealer also died. Now, aside from those uh, directly killed there are now orphans uh, because of those uh, victims who were killed. According to the Assistant Secretary of uh, the Department of Social Welfare and Development, an estimated number of, or an estimate of 18,000 children have lost their parents because of their of the war on drugs. This one, the case of uh, Joaquin Garbo. He has. Uh, he had 10 children before he was killed. Hours after he was arrested from their house and was brought to the special anti-illegal drugs unit in the Botas, Joaquin Garbo was found dead. His wife and 10 children were orphaned. This had a bad effect on his son, John Ryan, who keeps on saying, I will take revenge for Papa. They took and killed him. He was just sleeping. Sometimes he was seen by his aunt playing with a toy gun. According to John Ryan, this is just a toy, it's not mine. This is just plastic, not like the one they used to kill Papa. What is uh, perplexing about this uh, drug war is how ruthless and unforgiving it is to the ordinary Filipino, yet quite lenient on big-time drug offenders. <coughs> the uh, Department of Justice cleared everyone implicated in the importation of the 6.4 billion peso shabu shipment. Next. And here's the thing. Duterte promoted the DOJ prosecutor who exonerated those implicated in this uh, <coughs> Shabu smuggling case. Next. Just last Monday, the DOJ cleared suspected drug lords from uh, their cases at the department. One, this one in the picture, is a, a friend 
or a compadre, as we call, of uh, Duterte himself. Peter Lim was uh, named by the Philippine National Police, the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency, and Duterte himself as the biggest drug lord in the Philippines. Yet, he cleared, uh, he was cleared of all charges. <coughs> Next. Worse, Duterte promoted the DOJ prosecutor who cleared uh, Peter Lim and the other drug lords from their illegal drug cases. So, it is clear now, this is not a real war against illegal drugs, as claimed by Duterte. Now, the question is, what is it for? Well, based on our analysis and uh, inside information, the nationwide EJ case are but part of Duterte's diabolical plan to control every segment of society, much like what he did as mayor of Davao City. It is meant to strike fear in the hearts of the people so he could control and manipulate them. Expanding further, Duterte in just 20 months has weakened practically all democratic institutions in the Philippines and now has almost total control of every sector of Philippine society. He has been uh, persecuting the political opposition like uh, Senator uh, Dilima and uh, as mentioned by uh, Senator Marco, <coughs> just this morning, the Department of Justice has filed a case uh, against me for uh, inciting to sedition. Inciting what? I really don't know. But uh, that's how the Philippine courts are now working. He has been harassing mainstream media, undermining the church, attacking the ombudsman. The Chief Justice of the Supreme Court right now is facing uh, an impeachment complaint uh, herself. And most of all, he has corrupted the police. Moreover, there is now a perpetual martial law in Mindanao. A few months ago, Duterte even floated the idea of declaring a revolutionary government. And now he is attempting to amend the 1987 constitution to ensure his hold on power beyond his term. Truly, all these tactics are straight out of a dictator's handbook. Even the ICC, before uh, Duterte withdrew uh, from the ICC, was not spared from the harassment. Truly, there is a creeping dictatorship in the Philippines, and the Filipinos are helpless witnesses to it. So the question is, how do we get out of this mess? Well, the international community, to include the foreign media, has been very helpful in calling out and putting pressure on the Philippine government to stop the extrajudicial killings. Because of this, the government has been forced to step back and is now trying to repackage the image of this drug campaign. For this, we are very grateful. But the killings continue. Thus, we appeal for your continued monitoring of the Philippine situation and that, you're, and that you continue to urge the Duterte government to respect the <coughs> rights and the rule of law. On our end, as the political opposition, to make Duterte accountable for his actions, we filed a communication at the International Criminal Court on crimes against humanity committed by Duterte. Recently, the ICC has announced that they will conduct a preliminary examination on this, and we are earnestly hoping that this would lead to a formal investigation and the eventual arrest of Duterte. Incidentally, just yesterday, Duterte officially withdrew from uh, the ICC, as mentioned earlier. Fortunately for us, based on the Rome Statute, a withdrawal will only take effect a year after the official notification. So bad news for Mr. Duterte, the ICC cases will continue. Finally, while Duterte remains relatively popular in the Philippines, his numbers have declined significantly <coughs> compared to when he first assumed office and are expected to decline further. Filipinos may be timid and patient, but we certainly know right from wrong. And we do have a tipping point. Ultimately, as it should be in any functioning democracy, the fate of our country is in our hands. Still, we expect this to be a very difficult battle. But we certainly believe that Duterte is one evil man. 
and being so, he's on the wrong side of history. Since all evil tyrants who lived in this world before him have been struck down from their thrones eventually and suffered ignominious ends. Thank you. I think it's a testimony to that. Um, incidentally, two heads of states over the last two weeks have one declared that the death penalty should be applied to drug dealers, and another one has changed the constitution to stay in power forever. They are the biggest allies of the Philippines. It's true that it will take a year to, um, to really leave the ICC, but it's also true, unfortunately, and you have demonstrated what has already been going on that withdrawing from the International Criminal Court is withdrawing from the concept of impunity and so or introducing impunity <coughs> to political measures. Uh, I would like also to introduce uh, briefly uh, San Basti from Forum Droge, who's one of the organizations that in Italy has been working on this. They also have, and uh, Leonardo Fiorentini is here broadcasting live on Facebook, a uh, column in, uh, in a newspaper every week, and we have tried to keep the attention of the Italian media on this. I don't know how much that has helped, but I, I'm glad to hear that international press has been uh, uh, helpful for you. So, because of time constraint, uh, Hassan will not speak. So, back to you, Dave, for the rest of the